And we're back. Right now, I have the pleasure of speaking with Miss Joyce Ellis McNeil. How are you tonight, Miss McNeil? Just fine. How about yourself? I'm great. Good. First of all, tell the viewers who you are and what ward you're running for. Hi, I'm Joyce Ellis McNeil. I am currently running for the 8th Ward for City Council. Okay. Um, why do you think you're qualified to run for council? Well, um, it started about 15 years ago. I uh, resigned from General Motors to uh, create a system that would help move welfare mothers from welfare to work. And in order to make that transition, as well as help them educate, it's more than just moving from welfare to work, it's getting educated at the same time. So I took the uh, career transfer buyout, and I invested over oh, hundred some thousand dollars and created Abundance of Love Child Development Center. It's a seven day facility. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 24 hours, seven days a week. And the goal was, as I've been doing this for 14 years, uh, understanding what is the plight of the underserved community. I address the needs at my daycare for the Hispanic community as well. So I implore them, train them how to be productive employees. And as I began to get into that, I got... Um, Endorsed into the uh, White House Community Leadership Briefing Series by Barack Obama Administration. Oh. And they, I went out to D.C. and began to understand what is a true grassroots leader is. And as I began to do that program, understanding uh, what they did was train us the shift that the communities are getting ready to make. It's getting ready to make a big shift. Uh, the damage that the auto industry uh, industry has done mm -hmm. and I believe that I can take my skills and utilize them and in collaboration and working with different stakeholders and making this change as well as keeping the um, community aware why we doing what we're doing why we need to do what we're doing and my goal is um, to make sure that social ed social equity get addressed in the midst of this shift. Okay, speaking of the community, what do you think are some of Flint's jewels? I believe that one of the jewels that I notice about Flint is that the tenacity and the resilience that uh, the community have. That's one of the jewels. I think that we still have a strong community. I believe that if we focus on the negative, the negative is what we get. Uh, we have a lot of um, culture here. We have a lot of diversity here. And if we need to sustain what we do have, and it is a joy. I walked in the 10-mile uh, crimp. Oh. Yes, and just to listen to the conversation of the different people walking that had never been to Flint and going through the uh, different uh, community, you can see that it is a jewel. And I could hear people saying, wow, I can live in Flint. This is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. So that's what gave me the strength that's, that uh, we can make a difference collectively. Okay. Now, did you participate in Imagine Flint? I participated on several times. In, in, in other words, in having a voice, what I did with uh, Imagine Flint was at CM Central Michigan University. I took the master plan and did a uh, capstone research on it. Mm -hmm. So I thoroughly went through the master plan, addressed the issues in the master plan, um, what you call an imagined plan. Uh, I've been going to some of the uh, meetings and sitting back listening to what the people have to say, um, controlling my biases. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I go back and do my research. On okay, it. okay. Now have you read the charter? Yes, I have. Do you think it needs revising? Yes, it is. It's time to be re um Mandates have shifted. Technology has shifted. And the charter needs to be changed uh, so we can move forward. Uh, if we're going to move forward, then we're going to have to look at that charter. Okay. And do you think we should shrink Flint? When you say shrink Flint, explain that. Well, this is one of Mr. Paul Herring's questions, so I really can't go into much detail as of what he was thinking by that. Next question. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, given the chance, what ordinances do you think 
we should strengthen or create? Wow. Some of the orders that we do have that, uh, that I think we need to really, really create is that I see an artist that's coming into place, and that's the marijuana dispensers. Mm -hmm. When you start talking about green space, and you got, uh, I know uh, uh, here people, a certain individual, you know, started looking at this here. We need to really strengthen that audience. We're going to bring in new audience like these. We really, really need to take a hold to it. We don't want our community becoming uh, marijuana dispenser every thousand feet. That's what they were saying in the last city council. Some of the audience that we do have on the books, because uh, I would like to do an evaluation. Uh, I am good at evaluating. It's about time that we sit down and evaluate what we have, what is working, what is not working, mm -hmm. what need to be revised. Um, I created a checklist. A checklist. This city council, um, every city council member should have that checklist because it allow you to evaluate those government service program. And before we implement something, there's a checklist that we need to look at. Why are we doing what we do? And then I think that's probably one of the purpose of the Imagine Flint mm -hmm. is to create a plan. And for the last, I think, what, 15 or 20 years, we've been operating without a plan. Mm -hmm. And you cannot spend people money without a plan. So we need to look at what we're doing with these orders and where are we at. And let's evaluate. Let's go back and evaluate. And if we're going to start all over, let's start from scratch and look at where are we at evaluate where are we at and just move forward. Okay. In less than 18 months, the council will be able to vote out the emergency manager. Will you or will you not vote for that? If there's any possibility <laughs> that we can vote out a EFM, I would vote him out because we live in a democracy. And when you start taking, I get so upset about this because mm -hmm. I spend hours at the poll voting. And the, the thing is, if someone is not doing their job, we are intelligent people, and we know how to vote them out. I understand why uh, Snyder thought it was necessary, but the question I have, we are the only state in the United States is using an emergency financial manager. Yes, I would vote him out and put the burden back in, on the mayor, on the city council, and so we can move the city forward. Right now, uh, what you need and what I'm able to give you as a city council person is two different things because we're on the EFM. Um, but I have a knowledge of them. I know how to work with them, the uh, emergency manager. And you can get things done. But we got to use strategic thinking and getting it done. I believe if we get this strategic plan on board where the mayor can present it to the government and the government can see that Flint has a plan to allocate funds and distribute funds and move the city forward. I believe within 2014 or later that the emergency manager will be gone. Okay. And they're going to turn it back over to the mayor. Okay. All because right. we are working on a plan. How do you feel about them bringing someone from Saginaw for that? Well, the good thing about me, I didn't have a whole lot of, uh, and that's a good thing about certain things is that if you don't know a person, you can't say what they did in the past. Uh, he just coming in as an emergency financial manager. And if you look at what the previous one done, all they're doing is moving money into the general fund, uh, taking money and putting it into the general fund, and uh, giving the public the assumption that we have a balanced budget. 2015, you're going to see that they didn't do anything but move funds, take your water, hike your water bill up, and put it in some type of general fund, mm -hmm. but the budget, uh, that budget is not balanced. I can work with Mr. Early, and I think, I believe that we can, I think that last, uh, based on what I've been saying, the last emergency manager just shut everybody down in the city council, which meant that it created animosity. And I'm believing that this um, new EFM come in will allow us to communicate transparency and um, reach out to the community. Okay, well, speaking of water, how do you feel about the Karagandi Water Project? Well, 
it's never too late to make a change. At the same time, people are expecting something uh, instantly. They think that this is going to reduce their water bill. As a matter of fact, I think your water bill is probably increasing more just to support this project. So I, I'm in favor of having our arm. I visited Detroit and we paid them a lot of money. So I think it's going to work, but here's another problem we have. And we need to issue the water is $250, $300, $400 water bill. And there's people trying to move today. And they can't move because the deposit is four hundred dollars. There's people in my three people in my community, and they don't have water. Okay, it's about time to wrap up our little conversation okay. here. I thank you for coming. Thank I you. want you to look at the camera and tell the viewers why they should vote for you for the November's election. On November the fifth, if you want to see a change, you want to see honesty, you want to see ambition, you want to see energy. You want to see collaboration. You want to see leadership in a totally different way uh, that we haven't seen in a while. I think you're best, and you'll be doing the best thing by voting for Joyce Ellis McNeil. All right. Thank you, Ms. McNeil. Thank you. All right. And we'll be back.